Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd, and it is time for an album review. Dinosaur Jr., I Bet on Sky. These guys were a Massachusetts band, first time I'm reviewing a record of theirs. And these guys really helped to define uh, a lot of the more underground sounds of, of rock in the late 80s and early 90s. A lot of them actually kind of bubbling up to international popularity thanks to bands they inspired. And they've done this with their early debut stuff, the album You're Living All Over Me, Bug, Green Mind. The band just has a really solid alternative rock, indie rock, grunge, and, and noise rock sound. And while it is easy to kind of toss these labels onto Dinosaur Jr., they do have a personality that, that is all their own. With their amps turned up to 11 and their guitars fed through some pretty hefty distortion pedals, they deliver just really rich harmonious chords backed up with some really melodic guitar solos and leads coming from frontman and, and singer-songwriter Jay Maskus, who writes these songs that are occasionally sappy and, and sings them with these really kind of wimpy, shy vocals, with a voice that is kind of deep but also a bit nasally and, and slightly whiny as well, a quality that I think has, has grown ever stronger in Jay Maskus' old age. Now, with the band's hard-hitting riffs and just pounding drums and, and, and just high threshold distortion combined with the melody, combined with the great hooks, combined with, with Jay's, 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 Jay's kind of soft voice, you do get something very loud, kind of abrasive, but the edge is, is taken off by how amazingly captivating Dinosaur Jr. songs can be. Now, in the band's current phase of, of their career, they're kind of in the midst of a reunion. After a series of lineup changes in the late 90s, Jay Maskus kind of ended up being the band's only original member, and they disbanded in 97, but Dinosaur Jr. reunited in 2005 with the original lineup, and it's kind of become one of the more successful rock reunions of the 2000s. The band returned to putting out studio albums without a hitch in 2007 with the LP Beyond, and in 2009 the band put out Farm, which was easily one of the loudest records in their discography. Some pretty hard riffs on, on that LP, as well as some just blaringly loud guitars. The drums just kind of snap, just crack like a gun going off. Which did kind of have its pros and its cons for me. You know, it's, it's no secret that on this channel I do love some loud, abrasive, and, and heavy stuff. But I have always been more partial to Dinosaur Jr.'s more melodic, more ballad-oriented side. That's where I really think the magic of, of Dinosaur Jr. comes out, because genre and, and style aside, Jay Maskus is a master of memorable hooks and, and moving melodies. And that's what kind of keeps following Dinosaur Jr. so fun, even though the band is essentially working with what's kind of a dated sound at this point. Now overall, between the 10 tracks on this LP, Dinosaur Jr. does present a few new ideas, but for the most part they're doing what they usually do as well as they've ever done it. The track You Don't Pretend to Know actually brings some strings and, and some piano into the equation, and even though, you know, you would assume that with the way Dinosaur Jr. plays guitar, especially, you know, when they're strumming their chords and everything like that, it may end up kind of messy, maybe a little underwhelming and, and overly chaotic, it really works. The track backs the strings up with some really tight rhythm guitar that I love. It's got a really nice hyped up energy to the instrumentation, but Jay Maskus' vocals are like in a completely different gear, and they're doubled up and, and turned up a little bit in the mix to kind of lovingly cradle the, the fast rock instrumentation that they're singing over. You know, it's something that really kind of chills me out, even though the instrumentation is going fast, I just feel like Jay just has such a, a calming voice that I love hearing on, on record to record to record from these guys. The track Watch the Corners right after the intro though, I love Love even more. The track has this badass introductory riff that when it eventually goes into the, the verse chords of the song, I'm just loving that rich distorted guitar tone as it kind of bounces back and forth between those chords and, and a really kind of sweet blaring guitar interval. In addition to those two introductory tracks, there are a lot of good rockers on this LP, like the track I Knew It Oh So Well, which kind of has a cheesy introductory riff, but I love the chord progression on the hook, and the end of the song is finished off with a guitar solo that is just 
epic and, and seconded only by the really anthemic closing track. The track Pierce the Morning Rain is just a barn burner, but not every J track was, was completely just love for me. The track Almost Fair is kind of an acoustic pit stop on the LP, but the groove on the track is just so kind of rigid and, and underwhelming. And I thought the pacing on the track What Was That was kind of underwhelming as well. Of course, bassist Lou Barlow, who's also known for his work in, in the Folk Implosion and, and Sebado, his contributions to the album aren't bad. Definitely not my favorites. I do prefer Jay over Lou in terms of uh, vocal delivery, but what Lou does bring to this album is, is definitely some much needed variety. The first contribution of his, Rude, is, is kind of a country-tinged rocker, and later recognition on the album really stands out because of its staccato riffs that, that open the track up. This is not a bad album. I mean, great closer, and I think the first two songs on this thing are two of the better rock songs of this year, period. But overall, as an album and just as a band, I don't feel like Dinosaur Jr. really went above and beyond in, in any way. You know, it's comfortable, it's consistent, which is something to be admired, for sure. Even though there were several tracks on this thing that I did find to be slightly forgettable. I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this LP. What did you think of this album? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? And what should I review next? Anthony Fantano, Dinosaur Jr., forever.